I said that I was going to get him here and to, to really share with you guys some more traditional ways of preparing for money work when it comes to the hoodoo uh, type sense. The conjure, isn't it? Yes. It's conjure. Well, all those words are the same thing. Conjure, hoodoo, or root work. Uh, oftentimes you hear people uh, using them interchangeably. Um, and they're talking about different aspects of the same work. So conjure is root work. You're using the roots and you're working with the spirit of the roots um, in order to uh, petition their assistance in your work. Right. Um, and it's a very specific way that you bless the roots and then uh, petition them for their assistance. That calls it root work. Um, and then there's conjure because you're, you're conjuring the spirits of the roots. You're conjuring um, other spirits that are willing to assist. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as the hoodoo, uh, that talks about the history of this work and where it comes from mm -hmm. and how it evolved over time in its current and modern day expression. So let's get this conjure man <laughs> up and he can show you the traditional way <laughs> of, of dressing these candles. How's that sound? Mm. Oh. Yeah. Right now we're going to talk about how one would dress a candle, uh, a taper candle. Uh, first off with the taper candles, um, you want to uh, use the word. And so, you know, uh, seven days the word was created with the uh, with the word and so we use the word in our in our work meaning that you want to actually write your petition on the candle you can use a nail uh, just a regular nail that you would use a carpenter's nail it has a really sharp point and it's easy to write small letters so that's what I often do in my work is I use a nail or you could use an actual writing pen if you're not if you don't want to use uh, if you don't want to use a and now, so something like this, easy peasy, uh, has a sharp edge, uh, easy to maneuver when you're writing. So let's say uh, I'm writing success, money, income, prosperity. You also want to write your name, your birth name, and your date of birth on the candle. You want it to be very specific to who you're working for. So if you're working for someone else, you want to write their name and their date of birth on the candle. You want uh, you want uh, the candle to know who it's working for and why. So after you have uh, your candle completely written on, and I suggest writing on the entire candle until it's completely filled with words, put the work in. If you're, if you're going to ask for something, you're going to have to put the work in, cover this candle in words. I suggest writing as small as you possible, possibly can. A part of this work is imparting a portion of yourself to the candle. And so that's why we take our time and we're very precise uh, with the words that we write. After the words are written on your candle, uh, go get yourself some oil. Um, oil has a spirit all of its own. You can go to any uh, shop and get yourself a high drawn oil is very good for this work. It's a good base for many drawing work. So when we're talking about the ingredients and in conjure work, they come together as a family or a community to cause the desired change. So not just one of them are the end result, meaning like high John is to overcome obstacles. So it's not necessarily... Uh, the only ingredient you want to use for money drawing, but it's a good oil base for money drawing. And then the roots can complement actual money drawing. Uh, so you can get a uh, high drawing. But traditional hoodoo, as it has evolved, uses what it has around it. So a lot of the ingredients that's used for candles are very basic, very simple, things that you can find in your cupboard, like olive oil. That's the oil that's mainly used in money drawing work. It's also the base for a lot of other uh, hoodoo oils. You just want to put a little bit in your hand. You got to get dirty. If you're going to do this work, you got to get dirty. Get, get it all dirty. over your <laughs> Get dirty. <laughs> get it all over your palms um, and get that candle nice and dressed, um, nice and covered with that oil. Um, one cool thing about dressing candles after you've carved in it, the words will become more pronounced uh, as you write, uh, wipe it down in oil. Once again, the olive oil is, uh, olives are very hardy. They're very prosperous. And so uh, they help uh, with money drawing. After your candle is nice and oily, have ready a, uh, have ready a root blend. Uh, this is a pre-root uh, blend. We're not going to talk about what roots to actually use this video. Roots are another expression of herbs, uh, something that you'll hear more commonly in Hoodoo. Are them being um, are there, are them being described as roots, and that talks about uh, the African influence in traditional hoodoo. Um, but 
uh, this is we're just talking about how you do this. We're not talking about the actual roots that you use this time. We'll get into that in a later video. So spread your roots down on a flat surface like so. Have them nice on a flat surface like this. Take your candle and just roll it in the roots. So the oil is actually going to help the roots to stick on the candle, and that's what you want. You want the roots to stick on the candle. And in fact, I like the, I like my blend a little finer than this. Uh, so you can chop it as much as you like, but uh, the finer the blend is, the more you actually get to cover the candle. So your candle should look something like something like that. So this is just a demonstration, guys. This whole process should take you uh, up to a half an hour per candle or 20, 10, uh, 20, 30 minutes if you're really taking your time to write it, if you're really taking your time to dress it in the oil, if you're really taking your time to bless your roots, uh, really call the power out of them. So it's a process, and you're putting in work. It's not. Uh, it shouldn't be quick. And it shouldn't be easy. It should be something that's a little tedious, just a little bit, where you're putting a little bit of your own spirit in it. A portion of your spirit's going into each candle. Okay. So would you put it on a stand, or? You could put it anywhere. You could put it on a stand. If you want to put it on a stand, uh, as long as it's a fire-safe uh, surface, you don't want your house to burn down. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not about. Good. Yeah, that's the opposite of money drawing. <laughs> um, yeah, just put it on a stand. Um you could put it on a plate. You could put it uh, on the earth itself, which would be interesting for money drawing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could just sit it up like that. It doesn't matter where you put it. Um, you want to make sure there aren't any symbols underneath or there's no, you know, you want to make sure your surface is clean because that could affect the work. Um, but as long as, it's a, you know, this is a gold surface, it's pretty cool. You know, money drawing, gold surface, it works. Right, um, right. So that, that was, all, I'll just ask you a couple of questions that I know our viewers will be asking us. So when you were rolling the, um, Australians say herbs, <laughs> Americans say herbs, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Conjurements say roots. <laughs> <laughs> and they say roots. <laughs> I'm just saying I speak of um, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I've been doing this for a long time. I, if you're going to do money drawing and you got money drawing roots on your hands and you got money drawing oil on your hands, you, that's, this is how I clean my hands after my work. Like, oh, I get, it, you so, then, I get money me. drawn on me. <laughs> I want that money drawn on me. <laughs> that's right. That's nice. So I'm going to ask you some questions about that. So if you're at home and you weren't doing a video, what would you be thinking as you were rolling those herbs or roots? At home, uh, I usually have uh, I usually uh, have all the lights. This is just from my personal practice. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. going to practice their own personal way, but yeah. I have all the lights out. I don't like electricity when I practice. Mm -hmm. um, only want candlelight. I want my attention to be very focused and precise. And so I don't have the TV on. I don't have my phone on. I don't have you know all these distractions. I only have candlelight. Right. Um, I have my whiskey. And what I'm thinking about, mm -hmm. um, I'm saying prayers. I'm just mm -hmm. saying prayers repeatedly in my mind. And I'm asking my spirits to come in and assist. And I'm, I'm waiting to feel them come. Yeah. And if you're sensitive to this stuff, you should feel them around you. They should be sitting behind you and in front of you. And they should be helping you. It's not just your hands that are doing this. You're right. getting the hands of your uh, ancestors. You're getting the hands of the saints. You're getting the hands of the spirits that work with you. And they should all be gathering around you, working. If you don't feel that... If you don't feel like you, uh, you know, you're not the only presence there, then something's wrong. And you really, I think, you need to analyze your connection with spirit at that point. How do I just not roll a candle in some herbs? How do I connect to spirit? And I don't feel that connection yet. So is this all BS? No, it's not. And I think it's really important what I say, and you please correct me as, as we always do. We both have different opinions. Is I say fake it till you make it. So if you really are sitting there and you're doing it, don't be thinking, I'm not connecting at all. I'd say, think about the deity that you're trying to connect to. What would you say? What advice would you give? I would say power comes from many different sources. I agree with the idea of fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. um, each root, so this is a root blend. Like what we were using in the candles, that's, this is a root blend. Each of the roots in this blend has a very specific spirit all its own. Mm. And so if you're if you can't if you don't feel like you're connecting with your your ancestors, your deities, whatever you work with in your practice, then understand that at some point these roots were alive. They were living, yeah. they were breathing, they were eating, they were reproducing. They're living entities. 
and so with with a consciousness all their own. So you're petitioning for their assistance in your work. There's a, always a type of spirit around you. You don't ever have to. Right. I mean, if you believe that you have a spirit, and if you don't believe you have a spirit, this ain't this work ain't for you. But um, if you if you really believe you have a spirit, then you have to believe that uh, mm. these living things have these living roots have spirits as well, and they can assist you in your work. Right. Okay. So that's really good advice too. Now, I'm just trying to think of some other questions you guys might have about what he just did, what St. Elias just did with the rolling of the candle. What are some questions that you generally get from your clients? I know you're super popular. I don't popular. accept questions. Yo, you do. He does, so. <laughs> He's always on that. You know, you know, he does consultations too. I don't like. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take. I'll, I will take questions, but I mean, it, it's like you got to. If you, if you're you trying, pay the man. If you're, <laughs> Um, it's pretty simple. Like, you know, it, the oil is what makes the roots stick to the candles. Right. Um, you know, the oil is uh, is a different expression of that spirit. So uh, you're using everything in your power or everything in the roots power to assist in your work. So you're using the oil, you're using the roots, you're using your connection to spirit, you're using the candle. And as we talked about a little earlier, you could use a planetary hour or even the moon phase. In this, he didn't in this say that because he's doing comedy work right now. <laughs> 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 well, but, it, but it's useful. So. Yeah, it is. That's so true. And then, and then you're connecting to your spirits. You're drawing your spirits. I'd say you, you're feeling them around you. And when you feel like they're hearing you, then you say your petition. What do you do in conjuring? Do you, do you say your petition and then light the candle? A lot of people use psalms in psalms. their in their work. Okay. Psalms specifically. That's so right. For when conjuring. we're talking about yeah. the yeah, when we're talking yeah. about the Bible, you could use uh, different passages that make you feel like you're petitioning, especially if you're Christian, and that's something to, to be aware of in, in Hoodoo. Um, a lot of people, a lot of folks, because of where it comes from, are Christian, and you can be Christian and practice Hoodoo. Yeah. Um, and so you would use the Bible in your work, and you would use Psalms in your work, um, or you could just pray. You could just right. pray to your spirits. You can speak from your heart. I think that's the most powerful thing. When you feel your spirits around you, when you feel that kind of, when the air begins to get thick, and you feel your spirits around you. Mm. Yes, you use your words, the power of the logos, the power of creation through words. Yes, you use that to uh, to add to your work as well. So, um, What psalm would you uh, recite? Uh, I don't know psalms. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Here's a Bible I burn myself. <laughs> <laughs> we might cut that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I asked my ancestors for their assistance. I asked, uh, you know, the conjurmen and the witches in my bloodline because, you know, if you're, I, I'm a strong believer that if you're practicing this now, then it's it, it, a portion of it at least. Not that it directly came from your living ancestors, but you have someone in your lineage somewhere who did this before you, who's, in, yeah. who's drawn you back to this path, right. and now you're continuing their work. Yeah. And so they're, of course, they're guiding your hands and they're showing you which way they did it, and you can petition them. And when they come, tell them exactly what's on your heart and in your mind. This is your private time. No one's watching. Right. So be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And tell them exactly what you want. If it's yeah. money, then, you know, I always tell people also have a, have a denomination. If you're looking to pay, pay bills, know how much you're asking for. If you're looking to you know, open a business and give you a certain amount of money. You know, ask for that amount of money. I'm a witch. I've got no issue because like, from my our part, like your path too. But like, we've got no issue asking for money because you know what, you deserve it. And if you think you don't deserve it, then don't be a witch man. Because I especially one on the left hand path. There's enough out there for everybody. You know, you don't have to feel like you're taking anything out of anyone else's mouth because you weren't. Right. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want, especially in front of your altar and your private time with your spirits, because right. they will give it to you if you. Ask. Exactly. Don't you think your ancestors want you to do well? Like they're looking at you and thinking, just ask for it. We've they, some, made some mistakes and now we want to give you another blessing. Absolutely. So just damn ask Absolutely. For it. Your ancestors have spent their whole life working towards goals. Right. And now you have the hands and the feet, the in the in the eyes and the mouth to be able to cause change. You're continuing their work. Yeah. They only want you to be successful. Right. And that's why we default to our ancestors in this work. Because right. they only have your highest intention. Well, most of them. 
you know, yeah. some of them are assholes like anyone else in the world. You know, there were people. Yeah, they, <laughs> they were people. You know, but they all they all see you as the continuation of their work. So That's they all right. want you to be successful. If you ask them to, you know, hey, I need your assistance for getting some money. They're, I mean, all their wisdom, all their guidance, all their knowledge. They're going to put it towards helping you in that in that way. And you're giving them an offering of light with the candle. You're asking uh, the assistance of the roots in your work. Yeah. And so all these things are converging in one in in one. Uh, at one point, right. you at your altar doing your work, yeah. all these spirits, you know, coming in to help you, all this wisdom, guidance, clarity, insight. I mean, so it's a powerful moment when you're doing this. It, it, I mean, ancestors are number one in conjure. They're extremely important. We're, we're, we're asking for our ancestors are literally the foundation on which we stand. They, yeah. their, their bones reside in the earth. We walk on the earth each and every day. They, they're in our blood. I mean, they are the quickest to help us because a part of them resides in us literally. Yeah. And so, yeah, even if you have deities in your practice that you work with, um, you know, sometimes they can be a little celestial, a little, right. you know, removed. But with their ancestors, uh, they aren't removed at all. They live this life. When you're asking for money, they know what it means to have to pay bills. You know, deities don't. <laughs> That's so true. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> but your ancestors do. They know what it is to love. And when you're asking for love, they know how that feels. And so they'll, they'll act on your behalf very quickly. I love that. I love that. That's what I love. <laughs>